for rounds. Yeah, yeah. let me show you these. Yeah. <clears throat> So they started using they started using your private property as a shooting range. Basically, yeah. yes, and there were people on property. Our grandparents, our uh, both of our fathers and our mothers, along with you know, in some cases, kids. Wow! And this continued through the fifties. The big big problem started in 1951 with the first above ground nuclear test, mm. a test they did not even inform our family of. Wow. So if you can imagine, you know, you're out there a considerable distance from, especially at that time, from anything. Yeah. And this, and this bomb goes off. And not only are you, you know, you think, oh, my God, what is it? The nuclear dawn is here. And you can't Google it. You can't call anyone. You have no idea what occurred. Those above ground tests really started the demise of our, what the fortune that our grandfather had built. Everything was paid for. The mill was paid for. His equipment was paid for. He just didn't, he didn't know anybody. And he was making really good money at the time. Let me ask you about health effects, because a lot of people are concerned about the long-term health effects uh, of the nuclear radiation that was carried by the wind. Of course, the, the military exposed soldiers to these above-ground nuclear tests. Uh, yes. Were there any effects in your family? Yeah, and, yes, and there was some of that, and I'm going to hold this up, and I hope you can you can get it. If not, we can tell you where to find it. But right here, this is a wow. picture, and that is our grandparents, uh, Dan and Martha Sheehan, along with Ben's dad, Bob Sheehan, and Cleo the cat in the corner. You can see him there. That's <laughs> about uh, four o'clock in the morning. That picture was in a 1953 issue of National Geographic. This story ran in the Sacramento Bee. And if you look, the story focuses on death, disease, followed tests. Wow. Families in the U.S. silent on radiation risk. There you that go. Is amazing and that um, they would if you're interested in learning more about the Sheehan's, you can go to facebook.com forward slash groom mine. And there's actually some videos on there of some of the uh, elders. They're talking about the health effects that they suffered after the nuclear testing going on 20 miles from their house, 20 miles from their house. So they were being used as guinea pigs by the federal government. And you think this government, if they will do this to just regular old people trying to make their living in an independent way. You don't think they'll do it to 3,000 people working in the World Trade Center. Yeah. In fact, let's just look at what the official story is. The official story is that terrorists with box cutters took over four planes. They got 100% of their targets hijacked. And then they hit 75% of their targets uh, bypassing this multi, multi, multi million dollar aerospace defense system that we have located with, with NORAD. Just were able to fly on by doing whatever they want to do. And, and nobody got fired. <laughs> nobody got fired. Nobody got reprimanded after 3,000 people died. Okay? And you, believe, and you believe that there's no inside job, that, that it was just terrorists. You believe, if you believe that, you're a total moron. Now also on Infowars.com, video Oath Keepers vow to guard Kim Davis from further imprisonment. There's an uh, interview there with uh, Stuart Rhodes that you can check out. I just want to read a little bit of Stuart Rhodes' uh, statement. We believe the federal district court judge, David Bunning, grossly overstepped his bounds and violated Mrs. Davis' due process rights, and in particular, her right to a jury trial. The judge has assumed onto himself not just the powers of all three branches of government, but also taken on the powers of judge, jury, and executioner. What matters to us is not whether you agree with her position on gay marriage or her de decision not to issue marriage licenses. What matters is that the judge is violating the Constitution in his anger and desire to punish her for going against his will. That is the real story. That is the real story here. Not whether or not she's going to issue state licenses to gay people who want to get married. It's the fact that a judge put her in jail and she had no trial. We have to have due process. Whether you agree with what she did or not, if you're not for due process, someday you won't be getting that due process. So we have to stand up for everybody or none of us will be getting anything. So uh, also, I'm going to do a little preview on an article. Uh, Wayne Madsen is going to be on the nightly we news tonight with crap. David Knight. The article at Infowars.com, pedophile enabling prosecutors and officials try to run a PA attorney general out of office. This is an investigative report that Wayne Madsen did exclusively for Infowars.com. He's going to be on the nightly news tonight with Dar uh, with David Knight. I almost said Darren McBurin. Uh, with David Knight talking about how this uh, ties into the Sandusky issue. Uh, if you don't know, Penn State was where Jerry Sandusky was raping little boys in the shower, and he's now in jail for it. Um, 
Now I want to jump to uh, the 28 pages uh, piece that uh, Darren McBreen put together. And this is one of the big smoking guns out there right now. So um, I think we're going to go straight to break from this. When we come back, we're going to have Tony Rook, who's actually uh, putting together a film where he stood up against the BBC and, uh, how, and what he believes is their 9-11 cover-up. I believe it, too. So let's roll the 28 pages. Rand Paul has joined the fight to get the federal government to release the missing 28 pages of the official 9-11 commission report. And that was blocked and kept secret by the Bush administration. And that's because they know full well that the documents will prove once and for all that the Saudi Arabian government was directly involved in the attacks on September 11th. So very embarrassing, not to mention treasonous by George Bush and Dick Cheney, who are both implicated here in a massive cover up. And remember, it was George W. Bush himself, the hypocrite who had this to say about anyone harboring terrorists. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Oh, is that right, Georgie? It's going to be like that, huh? You're either with us or you are with the terrorist. Well, you're the one, George W., who vacations with the Saudi royal family. And you're also the one who used to vacation with the bin Laden family. And you're also going to find yourself in prison if these documents ever see the light of day. This sort of shocking when you read it, as I read it, and we all had our own experience, I had to stop every couple pages and just sort of absorb and try to rearrange my understanding of history for the past uh, 13 years and the years leading up to that. It, it challenges you to rethink everything. And so uh, I think the whole country needs to go through that. That's right. These brave gentlemen have seen the 28 pages and they want the documents released. You heard Representative Thomas Massey say right there that it will challenge you to rethink everything. Whatever is in those documents is going to change world history. I want those documents declassified. I'm embarrassed to be associated with a work product that is secret. But wait, there's more. Former Senator Bob Graham who also co-chaired the joint Senate House investigation into the September 11th attacks. He says, I am convinced that there was a direct line between at least some of the terrorists who carried out the September 11th attacks and the government of Saudi Arabia. He called it a smoking gun. And he went on to say, the reason for this cover up goes right up to the White House. Meanwhile, here's what they are saying in the New York Post. The Saudis deny any role in 9-11, but the CIA in one memo reportedly found incontrovertible evidence that Saudi government officials, not just wealthy Saudi hardliners, but high-level diplomats and intelligence officers employed by the kingdom helped the hijackers both financially and logistically. And if the Saudi government did indeed help finance and train the hijackers, well, that, my friends, that is an act of war. And I'm so glad to see the truth finally beginning to surface. Senator Rand Paul has just introduced legislation called the Transparency for the Families of 9-11 Act. And that would force the Obama administration to release the 28 pages. Over a decade ago, a bipartisan congressional committee investigated the 9-11 attacks and wrote a report. 28 pages from that report have never been released to the public. We're here today to call for the release of those 28 pages. The survivors, civilian heroes, and families of the victims of September 11 terrorist attacks, some of whom are here today, deserve the full truth. We cannot let page after page a blanked out documents be obscured behind a veil, leaving these families to wonder if there is additional information surrounding these horrible acts. So there you have it. Rand Paul thinks that we all have the right and that the 9-11 victims' families have the right to see what's in those documents, no matter how embarrassing or how incriminating it might be to George W. Bush. So what do you say there, W? 
Why don't you let us see what's in those 28 pages? That's right. You can watch the rest of that video on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. We just uploaded it. Broadcasting live from the Central Texas Command Center. It's the Alex Jones Show. This is the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Uh, we're going to have different hosts sitting in here from time to time. It'll be myself, David Knight, Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson. Um, the final segment, I'm going to have Joe Biggs in here. He's going to have some uh, updates from the Fox Lake police shooting. It's getting weirder. And, uh, and I actually made the call a couple days ago to him. I said, this is starting to look like it's a uh, somebody was suicided. But we'll see. He's got some updates. I, I, don't, I don't exactly know what he's going to be reporting on. But before we get to that, are you prepared if, uh, say, the lights go out? For two or three weeks, if there's an earthquake in your area or a massive flood and you're stuck and not able to get to, uh, you know, the store or maybe the stores aren't working. Maybe everything's shut down. Do you have food to uh, feed your family? Do you have clean water? Well, right now we're uh, at InfoWarsSelects.com. You can go there and you can get some of the lowest prices anywhere for storable food. Uh, we got the two-week, four-week, three-month supply, six-month supply, one-year supply. There's even a fruit and veggie snack mix if you just want to load up on, on snacks that'll stay good for 25 years. Or an 80 serving of mega protein with real meat. So they have the prices. We're only going to have this for another couple weeks uh, of the prices this low. So the time is now to stock up. Uh, and it is our own private line. This is the best stuff out there. No MSG, no yeast extract. Uh, it's got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or you can just get a snack kit. And, and they also, they all come in Ziploc bags, so you can, uh, you know, close them up, keep them nice. All that stuff, InfoWarsSelects.com. And also, info it's actually InfoWars Selects. It says it on here. Okay, it could be InfoWars Select. We're going to, the beatings will begin as, until morale proves. Anyway, we also have a new shipment of Brain Force in, and uh, Alex has been taking this. He's definitely sharper in the morning. She's cut out his coffee intake. Um, I have yet to take it on a regular basis. I did take it for a couple days, and uh, and then we ran out of it. And I was taking one of the bottles that was open here. But And now that it's back, I think I'm going to get my hands on a couple bottles and try it out. But let me read to you some of the reviews from people who have been taking it. This is from Lydia, the energy seeker in the UK. I take one to two tablets a day and find the clarity of thinking has increased massively. She gave it five stars. And then we have Blue in Gainesville, Florida. At first, I was skeptical because I did not notice or feel an immediate difference. After three weeks of daily use, however, I started to feel razor sharp in the afternoons after taking brain force while eating lunch every day. On the days I did not take the supplement, that intensity was not there. Bottom line, this works and I have reordered it. Also giving it five stars. Check it out for yourself at InfoWarsLife.com. It's Brain Force. We just got a new shipment in, so get yours today. Now I want to bring on my guest. He is uh, famous for a couple years ago winning a lawsuit against the BBC for daring to call them terrorists and not wanting to pay his TV license. He didn't want to pay them their due diligence. Uh, everybody in the UK has to pay a TV license fee. And he said, nope, I'm not going to do it. Here's an article from the Daily Mail from back in uh, 2013, February. TV license evader refused to pay because BBC covered up the facts about 9-11 and claimed tower fell 20 minutes before it did. Here's another one. BBC foreknowledge of 9-11 collapse of WTC Building 7. British man won lawsuit against BBC for 9-11 cover-up. We have the man now who's actually working on a film on this. It'll be released in uh, just a couple months. It's called Incontrovertible. My guest is Tony Rook. Tony, how are you doing today? I'm okay, Rob. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Of, of course, it's sad that we have to bring this up every year and talk about 9-11 because people refuse to get off their keisters and demand that the government tell us the truth. And But it's good to see people worldwide are fighting for this. Uh, what first got you into wanting to uh, explain this? Was it just the 130 pounds that they wanted you to pay? No, no. I mean, uh, originally I saw a, a, a video by a guy called Mike Rupert who was uh, a Los Angeles detective and he was complaining about the, the importing of drugs by the CIA. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just a segment of that that mentioned 9-11. I wasn't uh, particularly knowledgeable about it. But um, as the years went by, I, be, I became, I, I, done, I, I did some research. And, um, and then, of course, I saw, saw Building 7, like so many of us, and that began to worry me uh, greatly. Um, and then the BBC, in, in this country, you have to pay £140 a year for the privilege of watching the television. 
Uh, and when I'd seen Building 7 go down and I realized that the BBC had reported that um, a couple of times, um, 